our very first episode of Community Links, where service meets students. I'm Caitlin Pages. And I'm Alyssa McFadden. We are very excited to host this new show that highlights LaSalle's devotion to serving others. Here at LaSalle, giving back is a key part of our identity. It's just who we are. Community Links is going to recognize the explorers on campus who give back to our community. We'll talk with some leaders who make us LaSalle proud. We hope that their stories will inspire you to become involved as well. Today, the president of Epsilon Sigma Alpha, Dustin Orner, will sit down with us to share his experiences with our on-campus service fraternity. But at first, we are going to interview Brother Robert Kinsler, Head of University Ministry and Services, to learn about why service is at the heart of the LaSalle community. Thank you so much for joining us today, Brother Bob. Thank we you really both for having me here, and congratulations on your new show. Thank Good you. <laughs> We're, we're super pumped about it. We're very excited. Um, so how did you uh, become a part of service at LaSalle? Like, what was the first part of it? Well, I mean, it, it's part of what University of Ministry and Service does. So I got that job 10 years ago and really came into a really vibrant service community at that point. I think we've grown a lot since, but there was already just a strong presence. There were service trips, there were weekly service groups, athletes were doing service. Greeks were doing service, a lot of other organizations. So LaSalle, 10 years ago, had a really, really rich, vibrant service community that I think over the years we've just gotten really, really better at. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we do, in the last couple of years, we have done 50,000 hours of service on campus, wow. which is a lot for a school our size. And again, that's everybody. Uh, you, you mentioned Dustin ESA, that they're part of that. You know, the Greeks, all, the, all those other groups that I mentioned. So that's for a school, like I said, for a school our size is a pretty, significant and the feds have this little thing where you add money to it like mm -hmm. that an hour of service is worth so we do pretty much over a million and a quarter with hours worth of uh, con contributed money into the community from the service that we do so okay. i mean i think LaSalle is an awful lot to be proud of yeah I, I would agree i think that the reason we wanted to do a show like this is to get the word out there about how important <laughs> service is and how much we see it as a huge part of LaSalle's campus um can you break give us a breakdown of what service opportunities are at LaSalle that you know of or you have interacted sure. with? Uh, again, University Ministry and Service has a, obviously a whole service side to it. Uh, that's at the office, which is down here on South Campus, uh, the Newman Annex. And on every, any given week, we have about 20, I think this year it's 21, uh, weekly service projects. They range from uh, neighbor tutoring, where students come to campus to be tutored twice a week, the PAL program, which goes out to local PAL centers, their police athletic leagues. Uh, we have Feed Philadelphia, which is one of our big programs. And they do something six out of seven days every week. So they're at the Sunday morning breakfast club, they're at Face to Face, which is a local food pantry, food kitchen. They are at the St. Francis Inn, they're at Sarnelli House. Every day they go someplace different, but they're out, uh, you know, like I said, six days out of seven in the course of a week. We have neighbor, neighbor to neighbor, which is our homegrown version of Habitat for Humanity. So our students go into the local neighborhood, literally like the block or two away from campus to our neighbors. We work with pastors of churches, we work with block captains, and we try to work with either elderly people, shut-ins, we might paint a room, we might clean out a basement. That's apparently one of the things we do an awful lot of. <laughs> um, you know, we might cl clear up a yard, and hopefully the goal is the students continue the relationship with the person. So they'll stop by, they might shovel snow when it's snowing. Um, we have a community garden, uh, Eco, which is a community garden. They started it last year and this year's hopefully year when they will start to bring neighbors actually in. They sort of spent the first year getting it up and running, but that's on West Campus and that has a lot of potential. We have um, the environmental group, which uh, if you've been in the union right outside of like Starbucks, there's now a water fountain where you can fill up your bottles, you know, your plastic and metal bottles with mm -hmm. water so that not always just buying water, there's an easy place on campus to fill up water uh, to use it uh, so that we were conserving water. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think where are some of the other weekly groups. Uh, AIDS Outreach is one of our big ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. AIDS Outreach goes to a place called Calcutta House. All the people in Calcutta House are HIV positive or have full blown AIDS. Most of them are homeless. Most of their families just didn't want to be bothered with them once they find out the diagnosis. So our students go there once or twice a week uh, and they really just socialize. They play cards with them, they play bingo, they do Halloween parties, 
all those kind of things so that there's just people that are there spending time with them. That group also works at the AIDS thrift shop too uh, as a way to raise money for those kind of programs. So those are just the weekly programs that come out of uh, University of Ministry and Service. And I'm okay. sure I forgot something in there. <laughs> oh, well. I'll remember later. But, <laughs> you know, there's on any given week, like last year we had 600 students who we figured did at least three distinct service opportunities in the course of the year. Wow. We have a lot of students who did 150, 200 hours of service, but at least 600. So wow. it's a lot of students who do that. And then, like I said, there's all the other service on campus also. So those would be the weekly ones. Mm -hmm. And then there's the service trips. And there are 11 service trips, which we, you know, um, has grown since I've been here. When I started here, there were five service trips. So we really have grown those service trips. Appalachia, which I think you were on, mm -hmm. is the oldest one. It's going to celebrate its 40th anniversary this year. And that's, a, that's a, just a long trip that's been out for a long time. It's like a Habitat trip, but the partners co-op the Christian Outreach for Appalachian people so our students go down and help to build houses for the people in Harlan County, Kentucky. We have two trips this year for that, you know, one in the spring and one in the summer. We have two um, Habitat for Humanity trips, one to North Carolina and the other one, we won't know where that trip is until they open up the Collegiate Challenge and we get to pick. Mm -hmm. But it, it'll be somewhere, you know, in the southern, usually we pick the southern part of the country. We have a trip that's become really popular, which is um, to Browning, Montana. The brothers have a school on the Blackfoot Indian Reservation, and our students go out there and work. It's also a cultural immersion because they're with really a different culture in the United States, which is not something that's easy to do. Uh, but it, it's, it, they get to meet brothers, they get to meet work with the Salian volunteers, and they get to spend time on the reservation, which is a unique experience for them. And the other thing that we've added this last year, which so was the first year we did it, was a trip to Camden. It's, it's our next door neighbor, but for a lot of students, money was a little bit of an issue. So we wanted to provide a real service opportunity that was affordable to students. And the Camden trip was, was the first one last year. Mm -hmm. Then the rest of the trips are international trips. Uh, the longest running probably at this point is the Dominican Republic trip, which works with um, the Village Mountain Mission and does work similar to Habitat, where they go into different villages up around Luperon, which is the city, and help families build houses. I think in all these places, Habitat and Co-op and uh, the DR, we're working besides local people. So it's not like us going in and do something, it's us going in to help people help themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so the Dominican Republic is one of the trips this we are going back to Kenya, which is uh, our longest trip. We go to a brother school in Nyeri, which is the second largest city in Kenya. And it's a big high school, but on the high school grounds are also what they call a uh, child care center, which is for us is an orphanage, which is a relatively a new phenomenon for Africa. They never had orphans because everybody, there were large families with the AIDS epidemic, that sort of changed things. Uh, so we go there, we work with the kids, we teach English, we rebuild dorms, uh, we do a lot of different work. And that's, a, that's also our longest trip, it's three weeks. We go to Haiti, after the earthquake in Haiti, the brothers committed to building a school there with a clinic. And we go there and work in that school. Uh, some of the students, if they are in health sciences, get a chance to work in the clinic. Uh, that's probably our toughest trip in the sense that probably the worst poverty some of our students see. But again, it's, it's become a very popular trip. I mean, students, students appreciate what's there. They get a real different feel for themselves and their lives. And this year we're adding a trip to Honduras, which will be uh, sort of similar to the DR trip. There'll be a couple more options. They, you could build a house, you could work in a clinic, you could work in a school. So there are just a couple of different options. Uh, you know, we, we try to provide different options because not everybody wants to lug cement blocks, not mm -hmm. everybody wants to work with little, little kids. Some people are afraid of the language issue, you know, in, in some of these places where they think if they don't speak Spanish or French in Haiti, they really aren't gonna be able to help. And I, when they get there, they find out that really isn't the issue, but they, they're afraid to go because of that in terms of the trips. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the other side of the service on campus, on university ministry and service. Mm -hmm. One thing that I think is very important about and I think is very unique to LaSalle that I've seen is that we don't just do service for 
the service opportunity. It's also um, very connected with the people. I know when Alyssa and I went to Kentucky, we worked very closely with Co-op and getting to know the carpenters and the people who lived in Harlan and uh, friends of mine who come back from the Dominican Republic. They get very close with the people that they're working along with, working for the children and uh, I know the Kenyan trip, they get very close to the kids that they're working for, Blackfeet, and as well as um, the activities around campus with the Calcutta House, it's just all for the connection with the people, and I think that's very unique to LaSalle and very important that kind of gets left out in the service. And, and there's actually a history of that, and it predates me, but apparently what we did in the past is we did the large breakout days, you know, like the service day we're doing, which are great, great days, but that was sort of the only thing that we did. And students went out to clean a lot and noticed that all these people were on the porch watching them. They didn't help. They didn't talk to each other. So there was no interaction, just as you said, between people. So they came back and said, that's not really who we are. And that's where we started to really develop the weekly service programs that would be ongoing so that we got to know people. Uh, and actually, neighbor to neighbor comes right out of that. It, you know, it was an idea that those students at that point had and were able to implement. So, the connection really is important. I mean, it, it is about relationships, and it's about how we get along with people. And I think one of the things that we hope is out of that, st by students meeting people that aren't the people they normally would meet, mm -hmm. they get a chance to reflect on what life's all about, and hopefully sort of think about, okay, how am I gonna be when I leave LaSalle? Uh, I, I've had a chance to meet people, you know, the people, that, for example, to go on the Kenya trip or the Haiti trip because they're with the brothers get to see some things that tourists just wouldn't see. So it is a really unique experience, and I think a you know, profound experience for them. And hopefully it makes them think about you know, how they've been gifted, uh, what they have, and what their responsibility is gonna be going forward in life. You know, that we're all responsible for each other, which is very, very LaSallean, taking care of each other. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Um, we're just about uh, wrapping up this segment. I just want to ask, did, have you ever been on a South service trip? And if you did, what was your favorite? Um, I've been on a couple. My favorite before we started the Kenya trip was Tanzania. Okay. And I've been to Tanzania three times. So wow. it, it, w it was a great experience. I mean, and would like to go back on a service trip. It's just that my mother's in a nursing home in Pittsburgh, so I feel a little awkward going. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it is, you know, to, to faculty, staff, who might see this to anybody, it is a fantastic experience. And it's a different way to spend time with students. It's a very different way for faculty and staff to interact with students and, and get to know each other in a different way. So Tanzania was great. That's I'm looking good. forward to going to Kenya at some point. Oh, that's awesome. Well, we really nice. hope you get the opportunity to go. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, and we hope you enjoyed hearing all about LaSalle service opportunities from Brother Bob. Uh, join us after this quick break to learn about our on-campus service organization from ESA's president, Dustin Orner. service safety message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons who want to keep everyone well connected Sorry. with strong healthy bones. My name is Caitlin. I'm six years old. I like to go to the beach with my cousins. When I was a baby, I was very sick. And then I got a liver transplant from an organ donor. He saved my life. This gift of life was made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Nine out of 10 of us say we want to die at home. But for a third of us, this is the last place we'll see. If you had just months to live, where would you want to be? Willie wanted to enjoy her great, great, great grandchildren. She chose hospice. See what's possible at momentsoflife.org. 
dying, what will it be like? You think you may know until you see what hospice can do. Expert loving care that enables more cherished moments, more smiles, maybe one more dance. Turns out when you're dying, there's more living to do. These families discovered what hospice is. See what's possible at momentsoflife.org. the show that brings service to you. We're here with ESA President Dustin Orner to learn more about his student group and how they interact with our campus and our community. So welcome Dustin, thanks so much Hi, for joining thank us. You. Thank you guys for having me so much. How was your walk from North Campus? Very far and my, my <laughs> left knee is a little bad, so <laughs> a little welcome. painful. Welcome, thank but. you for coming. Well, we appreciate it. <laughs> and as your pin says, ask me about ESA, that's oh, exactly yeah. what we're going to mm -hmm. do. How did you get involved with ESA? Well, actually, my history with service in general goes like all the way back to my hometown. And I knew coming to LaSalle, like one of the first things that was advertised to me was like the day of service. So I knew coming to LaSalle that it was like, a very service oriented community. So I wanted to find something that I could go to reliably, like make a lot of connections and still give back to the community. Like I love the city of Philadelphia. And so actually the girls across the hall from my freshman dorm were members of ESA. They were founding members. And so I got, to ha like I got to talking with them, and I couldn't afford it like my first <laughs> semester here. But coming into my sophomore year, I knew like that's exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to join ESA. And it, so far, it's been great. And you're now the president. Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm lucky enough to be on ESA with Dustin, so I mm -hmm. can say firsthand that it is absolutely a wonderful organization. You get to involve yourself mm -hmm. with uh, not only service, but the fraternity part of it, which yeah. is just a group of people all all working towards the same goal. Mm -hmm. So would you like to elaborate on that? Yeah, that's actually uh, one of the best parts about ESA is we're like a little more than just a service group because we have the social aspect. We have big littles, which is something that I think that a lot of other like services lacking is somebody that you can go to an event with and shoulder to shoulder work with like bond and they can see you grow. And it's also kind of nice to like, I don't know, have a family, like, have a network. Like I still talk to my big from when I was a friend, from when I like first joined and even my big's big. So like, and I still talk to my littles and their littles. So it's like really nice to have like that fa like familial aspect because I think like a lot of service gets down to like your connection with people. And so to already have people that you're connected to going into new service opportunities is something that's like very advantageous to our organization. Absolutely. Yeah. And mm -hmm. would you like to talk about our main philanthropy? Oh, Epsilon? I love our main philanthropy. Uh, <laughs> Epsilon Sigma Alpha's main philanthropy is St. Jude's Children's Hospital. And what they do is they actually pay for the treatment and care of children with childhood cancer, some of, who are ter some of which are terminal, some aren't. And I don't, I mean, like, who wouldn't want to help that organization? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, they don't even need a selling point. So, like, for me, like, I'm actually super proud of like the LaSalle community in general because only two weeks ago, like all of our donators at our table raised over $200. So like, thank you LaSalle students for that one. But um, just, working, just working with St. Jude's in general is awesome. One of our other events that we do is we like make cards that we send to them and we do that every holiday season. So actually coming up, we'll have a table that has them making Halloween cards for the kids of St. Jude's. Please show up to that, it's fantastic. Um, I don't know, it's just really, it's really great to like be able to be so closely related to them. And then our other main philanthropy is Hope for Heroes. And one of the things which we poorly planned last year because it's an obstacle course and we did it at a very cold time <laughs> in the winter. <laughs> but um, Hope for Heroes works pretty closely with ROTC and we're working with them to actually set up an obstacle course for the spring semester this year. That'd be ideal. So that, yeah, <laughs> teams of five get to compete in a little tiny like, I think it's like a four for event like obstacle So course. is that just ESA or is that That's all members of the LaSalle community? Like are, who would are open for that? Yeah. yeah. Everyone everyone can join. I actually like will you'll see us out tabling, you'll see flyers that encourage people to make teams of five and join. You don't want to be down any members because there is some heavy lifting involved <laughs> in that obstacle course. 
But yeah, it was a really fun time the first year that we did it. I think we actually got people tickets to, I want to say it was the XTU concert was yeah. the, first, the first place prize one of the years that we did it, which I thought was like the coolest prize, but <laughs> we had a president that had some connects that year. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, connections are always mm -hmm. good to have. Yes, and we also work in other areas of the community, mm -hmm. like with um, the PSPCA. I know mm -hmm. I was there last night with yeah. another member of ESA, and we're just branching off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our weekly, our weekly service opportunities are pretty nice. I mean, we don't, uh, I think that Feed Philadelphia gets like six days. We only have four right now, but we're working to get more consistent service opportunities. So every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we have at least three or four people that go to the PSPCA to work with dogs. Like, who wouldn't love that? And then on Thursdays, we do Cradles to Crowns, which is an amazing, amazing organization. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of them, but what they do is uh, they make care packages for underprivileged children in Philadelphia and they get one outfit for every day of the week plus three pairs of underwear and three pairs of socks. And you wouldn't think that the three extra pairs of socks are super important, but they're actually the most needed and least donated clothing item for any, any homeless shelter. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. I definitely think, because you don't think about that maybe in mm -hmm. the spring or the summertime, yeah. socks just aren't on your mm -hmm. mind. So come yeah, winter, but, mm -hmm. that's, it gets, that's it gets very hard, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And one of our events just passed. Would you like to oh, talk about the St. Jude yes. Walk in general? Oh, the St. Jude's Walk is really awesome. So it's a walk that's hosted every single year around the fall time. And what we do is we go to the Philadelphia Zoo and many, many different groups donate and join and raise money for it. And actually, one of the coolest parts about going to the St. Jude's Walk every year is that there's another Pennsylvania chapter of ESA from Kutztown University, and we get to see them every year and touch base with them and see like things that they're doing, sort of compare our organizations. There's that picture right there. It's really great. <laughs> yeah, but I love, I love, I love like seeing them. I love honestly the animals are kind of my favorite part. <laughs> so. What was your favorite animal that you saw? Um, I want to say giraffe because that's our like actual mascot for ESA. But in reality, I like goats and sloths a lot. And aardvarks are pretty cute because they cuddle when they sleep. I don't know if you know that, but like if you go fun to, facts yeah, from Dustin really fun Warner. facts. Great. <laughs> Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I think that I really admire the things that you guys do with ESA mm -hmm. because I think it builds, uh, like Brother Bob was talking about, a community within a community. So you guys yeah. have your own little network that you can draw from mm -hmm. and, and learn a lot about service from as well. Um, I think, yeah. uh, well, I think one of like, the, the nicest parts about like, the community on campus at La Salle to begin with is that even, even if ESA didn't exist, there already is still such an amazing community on campus. But like the fact that we get to contribute to it like, honestly makes me really proud. Like we've done so much since I first joined like ESA and just like getting to see like so many people go out and do service, like especially like, I really wanna shout out our service chairs, Jen Locke and Allison Mackle right now because they do so much and work their butts off emailing, like just tons and tons of places to see if we can work there. And sometimes they don't get replies back, sometimes they do. But just the fact that they constantly go through the motions Absolutely. just to make sure, it, to ensure that we all have service opportunities is like fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And unfortunately, you are a senior this year. Yeah. How are you going to carry on ESA's image and their, just oh. their goals? I think, I don't think that service is ever going to be something that leaves my life honestly like I've, I've done it since I was a kid I would work with church soup kitchens I would work with loaves and fishes in my hometown so I don't think that that's ever going to stop even if it's just at the holidays like even if I was like super busy like just to find time to go to a soup kitchen go to a homeless shelter like I encourage anybody it's such a learning experience to serve somebody else and to really understand them and like their needs and to be able to say to them like I got you like I can take care of you it's just yeah. like such an amazing feeling. Like I think everyone should have that opportunity at least once in their life. Absolutely. So what would you say to a freshman today who is thinking about joining ESA? I actually talk to a lot oh, of really? freshmen every day <laughs> about ESA. So uh, what I would say to them is that I actually get this question a lot, what makes Epsilon Sigma Alpha so different from other service organizations on campus? And I would say to them that it is the community 100%. LaSalle has a great tight-knit community in, U in UMass. And I think that ESA only serves to develop that further. We have such a tight knit group of friends. I mean, like when the weekend comes, I see about like seven or eight members every single weekend, either to do service or just to hang out. And like, it's so nice to know that the people that you're serving shoulder to shoulder with to like better the world 
are your friends, like some of your closest friends. So I would say to them that ESA gives you a great social opportunity to serve your community. Absolutely. Nice. And I think something that we're very curious about, if ESA could have a theme song, oh what would God. it be? What would you choose? That's really hard. <laughs> and I guess, let me think a little bit. I want to say Eye of the Tiger just because <laughs> it really it really does take a lot of motion to build, your, like, uh, like um, motivation to like build yourself up to go to a service opportunity. I know it is really hard to motivate yourself to think like, why am I doing this for somebody else for free? And so Eye of the Tiger is definitely like, it really warms you up and gets you ready gets to go out there. Gets you pumped for those 7.30 a.m. Yeah. walks definitely. in the zoo. It's 7.30. Oh, yeah. it's not that early. <laughs> it was a really early, yeah. It was pretty early for me. <laughs> I mean, normal college student, probably. Yeah. So Eye of the Tiger is your official yes. answer? Eye of the Tiger. Can we tiger. hold you to that? Yes. Final answer, Eye of the Tiger. You might hear it at our next recruitment event. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to put it on. I think that sounds, that's awesome. And thank you so much for coming out today. Thank you guys yes. for having and me. It was such our, a pleasure. On our Twitter, we will put all the information about how to join ESA and more please, events. Please check our Facebook group, LaSalle ESA. So, yeah. I I no, that's, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, check us out. Yeah, um, and one more note, uh, just to let you know that service application, service trip applications are due tomorrow, so, or tonight actually, just kidding. Oh, so 11.59 tonight, so if you're thinking about applying, uh, definitely do that. Um, I think that's it for our show today. Yes, thank you so much for joining us for Community Links. Uh, we hope that you can find your place on campus uh, to serve your community just like we can. Um, if you have any further questions uh, about how to contact us, you can visit our website at lasalle.edu slash lasalle tv, or you can follow us on Twitter at cl underscore la underscore s-a-l-l-e. Uh, we really uh, appreciate followers and we want to get the word out there. So thank you, thank so, you much. so much. And if you have an organization that you'd like to have featured on Community Links, feel free to let us know.